You know that saying, never buy a tech product based on future updates? That applies here to Apple's HomePod. Although Apple discontinued these, it didn't stop me from wanting to pick up a pair of them before Apple sold out. My motivation was that there was just a strong community online of HomePod owners who loved their purchase and it satisfied everything that they wanted today. After owning this for about a month now, I feel like I'm joining that group too. I love my HomePods. They're not a perfect product, but if you're looking for the best smart speaker for your iPhone, Mac, or Apple TV, this was it. The unfortunate reality is that Apple no longer sells this and it's actually sold out globally across many different countries. So in today's review, not only will I explain to you why I love my HomePods and why I also don't think they're a perfect product, we're also gonna do an in-depth breakdown of why the product failed and what's next in the future of Apple and HomePods and smart speakers. Let's start with what Apple did right, and that's the sound. These HomePods sound incredible. We have to pause for a moment and just applaud the audio engineers. They really did something special with the speaker set up into these devices. The HomePod packs seven beam forming tweeters around the device that help it give off this 360 degree audio effect. In addition, the woofer on the top of the HomePod is responsible for that clean, rich bass response that you get from this speaker. Combine all of that with the six microphone array that's built into the HomePod, in addition to the A8 chip that's powering this thing, and you have yourself a set of speakers that's able to analyze the room and placement that you put it in and make it sound amazing no matter where you place it in your house. Apple calls this spatial awareness and it ensures that no matter where you place your HomePod in your home, it's gonna give a room filling rich sound no matter where you are in respect to that HomePod. Something unreal is stereo pairing these HomePods together. It is an unmatched experience. The HomePods will be able to automatically detect the placement of one another and balance the music coming out of the speakers between each one. It works so well that it's honestly hard to detect where the source of the audio is coming from when you're in this vicinity of audio. It's just very room filling, it's excellent. The only sad thing about my purchase with these HomePods is that I live in a home where I can't take the full advantage of these speakers. They get very, very loud, but in a good way. It's clean, there's no distortion, the bass is rich and clean as well, it just sounds excellent. I probably sound like a broken record, but this is probably one of the best speakers I've ever heard. And I usually run these at 60% volume because any louder and my neighbors would kill me. The next thing that I wanna talk about is the Apple ecosystem. The state of the HomePod within this walled garden of Apple products is quite good. You can use these HomePods in stereo pair with your Apple TV 4K and drive Dolby Atmos audio through these speakers. It sounds fantastic and better yet, you can calibrate and sync your existing soundbar if you have one. I have a Samsung Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar, so that bar with my HomePods, it is, it's quite the experience. If you've been keeping up with the Apple Music updates, they recently added spatial audio and Dolby Atmos to a lot of tracks on there. All of those new Apple Music features work with the Apple TV 4K, and you can drive Dolby Atmos music tracks through the Apple TV to the HomePod speakers and it sounds amazing. Keep in mind that Dolby Atmos already creates this amazing surround sound effect with a single speaker, but when you have two HomePods separated from each other across your home, creating that surround sound effect between each individual HomePod, wow, <laughs> it, it, it sounds good. I wanted to clarify one thing though, if you airplay from your iPhone to these HomePods, it's my understanding that you can't drive Dolby Atmos from your iPhone to the HomePods. It only works if your HomePods are paired with the Apple TV 4K. For anybody crazy enough to want a pair of HomePods and a pair of HomePod minis, and you're wondering how does all that sound, I. I was one of those people that tested that out and it sounds freaking amazing. I don't know what Apple is doing, but to be honest with you, when I have all of these working together, it almost sounds like each of these speakers are doing individual things with the sound to create a really nice unity of sound in your room or in, in your living room. I, I just, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if it's placebo or if it's just me, but it, it really does sound like the HomePods and the HomePod minis when 
in an airplay sequence, they're actually balancing each other out, and, and it's it's quite wonderful, the audio quality and, and, and whatnot coming out of these speakers. Other minor features you can do with the HomePod is send text messages, take phone calls, you can intercom as well and broadcast a message to anybody in your home if that's something you're into. It can also recognize up to six different voices. So anybody who's talking to the HomePod, they can get their own personalized emails, reminders, text messages, things like that. I just wanna pause the review for just a moment. If you guys are enjoying this video, please do drop a like down below and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. You guys have no idea how every like and subscription goes such a long way in helping me make videos every week. But anyways, let's go ahead and dive right back into to the review. Overall, although I love the sound quality of the HomePod and its strong integrations into the Apple ecosystem, depending how deep you are in it, there are things that I don't like about this product that it's just a little bit frustrating. For one, my biggest annoyance is that there is absolutely no way to pair any other device to these HomePods because it doesn't support Bluetooth and the only way these work is with AirPlay and a Wi-Fi connection. So unless you own an iPhone and you breathe the Apple ecosystem and you're connected to Wi-Fi, you can't use these speakers. In my head, I'm just thinking like HomePods would be an amazing party tool. Like you can bring a pair of them if they were Bluetooth enabled and really deliver strong sound at any house parties or not that you're at. I mean probably isn't any right now because of COVID, but you get my point. However, to be fair, there is a slight workaround that just came out recently, and that's with the brand new Apple TV 4K as they now support eARC. All you need to understand is that it allows your Apple TV to relay audio from other sources connected to your TV, such as a PlayStation 5, and drag that audio through the Apple TV and drive it to your HomePods and it will work as intended. Another really annoying thing is that if you use Spotify, it's spotty. And I swear, <laughs> no pun intended there. Spotify is using AirPlay just like Apple Music, but it's nowhere near as smooth of a connection in comparison. For example, when you wanna play, pause or skip, or even just wind through a track on Spotify connected to HomePods, there is a very noticeable like three to five second delay, which can just be quite annoying sometimes. Whereas if you're using Apple Music, for some strange reason, it works instantaneously. If I wanna pause the music or skip a track, it happens right away. But on Spotify, it there's a noticeable delay. Also from my testing, you can't ask Siri to play specific songs or playlists from Spotify with these HomePods. It only works with Apple Music. To be fair, I don't think this is Apple's fault. I think it's actually Spotify's fault. They haven't added any of this functionality and you know, I don't blame them. They're very well integrated and aligned with the Google ecosystem and Amazon Alexa ecosystem. The nail in the coffin with using Spotify with HomePods and this cannot just be me because this is incredibly noticeable is that when you're playing music through Spotify on the HomePods, it sounds noticeably worse than the music coming out of Apple Music being driven to the HomePods. To me at least, it sounds like the Spotify app isn't really taking full advantage of the hardware that comes with these speakers. It almost sounds a little bit more muted, it doesn't sound as rich, and the separation of instruments and stuff, it's just not as good, and it's very noticeable. Like this is, anybody can, can hear the difference. So we know the good, and we know the bad, and we know the ugly, so let's determine why now the Apple HomePod failed. I think the failure of the HomePod has to do with the mismatch of what consumers wanted from a smart speaker and what Apple actually delivered. Most people care about the price and how smart the speaker is. They want it to be cheap, they want the assistant to be useful, and it didn't really matter if the speaker didn't sound amazing, it just had to sound good enough. However, Apple didn't follow this. Instead, they made an incredible sounding speaker at $399 Canadian, powered by Siri. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to connect the dots. The speaker was too expensive and people just weren't interested in that type of audio fidelity in their home. In addition, Siri had a lot of work to do over the years to finally catch up on some aspects with Google Assistant and Alexa. And then to top it all off, as I just explained earlier in this video, compatibility is so limited. 
there's no Bluetooth support, and the only way you can use this is with an iPhone or an Apple product that supports AirPlay. Like, the HomePod only works as intended with Apple services and Apple products. For example, Spotify has 345 million global users, many of them probably iPhone users, and if that's their music of choice or their streaming service of choice, you can make a really good argument that they might as well get a cheaper speaker that works much better with Spotify. Like they can save money and get better performance out of what they're trying to do. Makes no sense to buy a HomePod. So with the HomePods now discontinued and having an understanding of why they failed, what's next with Apple and HomePods and smart speakers and all this smart home stuff? I decided to spend a couple of weeks thinking about this and I think we can gauge from history about what's next for Apple. We got the iPad and then the iPad Pro. We got the iPhone and then the iPhone Pro. We got AirPods and then AirPods Pro. Apple started with the reverse order. They actually came out with a pro level product first, being the HomePod. And the problem was, was that people were not willing to spend the money to get that kind of lucrative experience. General consumers had no idea of the true value proposition of these HomePods because they didn't even want to buy it in the first place. None of their friends really wanted to buy it. So they couldn't really test this out for themselves. So Apple changed their strategy a bit. They came out with the HomePod mini, kind of like a fresh start and that was priced at $99, and it sounded impressive, and people were willing to taste at that price. So now, there is actually a huge population of users who are enjoying the HomePod Mini, and if Apple ever came out with a HomePod Mini Pro, now people have an experience that they can lean into to justify buying a more expensive speaker. It is a much easier sell to people because they have a relatable experience with their previous entry-level model that they spent money on already. I actually predict HomePods might have the same sequence as AirPods. It's a very similar track. AirPods came out and they had an entry-level Bluetooth earbuds that were, you know, somewhat not too expensive and people were willing to try them out and pay the price and people loved it. And now Apple came out with the pro version of these AirPods with all of the same features that people loved, but better and it sounded better and now it's more expensive, but people are willing to pay the price because they had a relatable experience with the previous entry level model. And even if they never tried the original AirPods, friends, family, people online, everyone tried AirPods. So they can lean into those experiences to justify getting the more expensive AirPods Pro. I think this is the way Apple's gonna have to turn this around. They're gonna have to keep updating the HomePod Mini and adding new features to make it more useful at $99 or even drop the price, get more people to buy into the product, and then come out with a HomePod Mini Pro or a HomePod Pro or whatever rebranding that they come up with. A fun fact, I kind of lived and breathed that story I just explained. I bought HomePod Minis first and I was very impressed with the speakers. And the reason why I bought them was that I felt like they were affordable and they weren't too expensive to try them out. And once I did, I loved them. And my next thought was, what else does Apple have? And I found they had HomePods. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's a pro level HomePod Mini out right now? I wanna try that because I love these. How much better are those? And you know, I feel like that's what Apple really needs to lean into here. Overall, is the HomePod worth it? And I know it's kind of a silly question to ask because you literally can't buy this anymore unless you go secondhand, but I will say that at least for me, these HomePods are totally worth the money. When you're as deep as I am in the Apple ecosystem, there is just nothing better out there than these HomePods. One little thing I didn't touch on in this review and breakdown is Apple HomeKit. Although Siri isn't the most competent assistant out there, what I love so much about HomeKit and Siri integration is that they prioritize privacy over everything. Like Google and Amazon Alexa, they're not very privacy-centric stuff. And when you're thinking about your home and, and the smart devices that you have, I really like the value proposition that Apple's offering and making sure that your privacy comes first and foremost before they do anything. I think for me, the only gripe I had was the price. It was very expensive, but after actually using it in my home, like not just demoing it in the store, because it's a different experience when you bring it home and, and test it out in your own living room, I was sold. I bought one 
And then I loved it. And then I went back to the store the next day and bought the second one, which actually happened to be the last one that they had at that Apple store. To summarize all of this in one sentence is that the HomePods are the kind of product that you need to bring home with you and try it yourself to be convinced of how awesome they are. And the problem that Apple had was that they just couldn't even get you to buy the thing in the first place. It was just too expensive. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the in-depth breakdown of the HomePods in my review. Make sure to drop a like if you guys did enjoy this video. Subscribe if you're brand new to the channel and comment down below hashtag HomePod if you made it to the end and let me know your thoughts. But anyways, I'll catch all of you guys in a future video later this week. Peace.